In uh, this next chapter, uh, chapter 10, is about lights. And we, have, we haven't um, worried much about lighting in, in our scenes. Uh, well, just because A-frame will uh, automatically add uh, lights to our scenes. Uh, so uh, for simple uh, things, uh, we really don't have to worry about it. So A-frame provides default lights. Um, there are enough uh, in many situations. Uh, but when we have uh, a more complex environment, um, uh, and when we are really trying to pay attention to the details uh, of that environment, then uh, lights are a very important aspect. Uh, lights can make the difference between an environment that really uh, uh, looks and, and feels uh, natural or an environment that seems odd, that seems uh, weird or unnatural when you are experiencing it in virtual reality. Uh, so uh, it is uh, an important aspect to consider in our environments. Um, one word of caution, um, lights can be expensive uh, computationally. So we need to be careful. So we need to pay attention to lights and we probably will want to add uh, additional lights uh, beyond, beyond the, the default ones. Uh, but at the same time, we need to be careful because they can add um, computational uh, complexity to, the, to our scene and make things go slower. This is particularly um, important when we have, uh, uh, in addition to lights, when we also have shadows. Uh, but we'll talk about that uh, later on. So, uh, as I said, uh, by default, uh, if we are happy with the lighting that A-Frame provides, then we really don't need to do anything. So, A-Frame will automatically add these two elements that you see here in, um, in your screen. And you see that uh, the element is called a dash light, so it's a, a primitive for uh, a light. And A-frame adds two uh, lights by default. So we don't see this in our code, but when we run our scene, A-frame will inject these two elements. Uh, one of the lights is what's called an ambient light, and the other one is what's called a directional light. And we will go through uh, each of the type, uh, each type of light that A-frame provides. Um, so uh, let's see this, this first example with these default lights. Uh, so this is an example, um, uh, a sample scene, uh, and it's, uh, it's the same scene that I'll use to explain uh, the different uh, types of lights. So uh, you see here two spheres with textures, one um, with a texture from planet Earth, the other with a texture that I think um, is for the moon. Uh, I'm not sure if the, the image file is exactly uh, taken from the moon or not, but it, it looks like uh, something that could be, represent the moon. So I, I just used it. Uh, and then um, just some um, kind of random shapes here. Uh, so a box, a cylinder, um, and this object, which I, I, I actually forgot. Uh, so it's kind of a, a pyramid. Uh, I'm not sure if it has a proper name. Um, and also uh, you see, it's not very uh, apparent, but there's a plane that uh, is mimicking uh, the ground. So with this uh, very light gray color and another plane. Uh, so these are both horizontal planes. Another one that's kind of uh, representing the ceiling. And so this is currently being lighted uh, with the default lights. Uh, I'm just going to open the inspector that we saw yesterday just to show you uh, 
that uh, these lights are really present, even though we didn't add them uh, explicitly to our scene. Uh, when you open the visual inspector and you see uh, the scene hierarchy on the left, uh, at the bottom you will see uh, these two A light elements, uh, one with an ambient light and one with a directional light. So if we look at, uh, um, at the source code, and uh, I will remove this just to show you. So I added those explicitly uh, with the default values. I'll, I will now remove them uh, just to show you that the A-frame will uh, add them uh, automatically. So let's go to that example. And I will just, instead of removing them, I will just comment the lines. I will, I will leave them here because uh, having the default lights and knowing uh, the values of the default lights, it's important uh, as we will see um, in the, the next examples. So now I'll just reload. Okay, so now it's commented and now I'll reload the scene. And you see that we have uh, the same thing. So I'll open the, the inspector and you see here uh, the lights. So in my source code, I have added um, IDs to the lights just to make it easier to identify them in the visual inspector. Uh, A-frame doesn't add an ID, so they, they look, uh, they are easier to miss uh, without the IDs. Uh, but they, they are here, so we can see the symbol, the, the, the icon for the lights. And then if we look at the properties on the right side, uh, if we scroll down, we will see um, at the bottom the type of light. So we can check that the, this first one is an ambient light and the second one is a directional light, just like the ones that I have explicitly in my example. So I'll restore my uh, example, the code for, for the example, just so that I don't forget. Uh, so these are the default lights. Uh, now let's look at each type of light in, in turn. So uh, we have uh, a type of light that's called ambient light. And ambient light is, it, it kind of tries to mimic uh, the, the natural lighting that we have uh, that comes from the sun, but that uh, uh, it, it, it actually, even though we can place the source of the light exactly, so it's the sun, um, actually when it uh, gets down to earth, uh, it bounces uh, around uh, different objects, it's refracted by the atmosphere, uh, bounces off different objects uh, on the ground, on, on walls, buildings, trees, and it kind of scatters um, uh, around. And so um, we can kind of simulate that kind of light uh, with something that's usually called ambient light. And so it, this light is a light that uh, actually doesn't have a specific location in space. Uh, even though our sun has a specific location, the way we simulate uh, light, this kind of light um, is by not assigning any specific location. So ambient light is present everywhere. We just basically define the intensity for the light and the color. But otherwise, uh, it will come from uh, everywhere. So it will uh, light um, it will cast light on every uh, side um, of, an, of a 3D object. So let's look at an example that only has ambient light to see how it looks. And I'll close, oops, sorry. I'll close the other examples here. And now one important thing to, to be aware of is that when we have, when we explicitly add 
one light to our scene, A-Frame will no longer add the default ones. That's why I, I, I mentioned that it's important to know the default values, and that's why I left the, those in the first example, so that uh, if you need, you can just go to the first example and copy the default values and then add additional lights. So if we um, insert uh, one A light element in our scene, then only that light that we inserted will be present. A frame will uh, no longer um, inject uh, the default lights. So we can see here, I'm going just to verify it in the visual inspector. So we have all the, the objects, the 3D objects from our scene, and then we see this A light. And it's the only one. We can check the icons here for the lights. It's the only one with that icon. So there are no additional lights in this scene, only one ambient light. And I'll, I'll get back to the scene. So this is how it looks, ambient light. So notice that as I move around the objects, their faces uh, are all exactly the same color. There are no faces that are brighter than other faces. And you can also uh, see that it's even uh, hard to know the exact, exact shape of the 3D object. You know the shapes because I showed them before in the previous example and they are the same. Uh, but if I didn't tell you what 3D objects they were, you might have a difficult time uh, understanding, for example, what kind of objects this one on the right would be. Uh, because the faces have um, the exact same lighting, no face is darker or lighter than any other face, and that makes it really hard to, underst to understand um, the 3D uh, of that object. So this is ambient light. It comes from everywhere with the same kind of intensity. So I'll use the, the visual inspector uh, because it, the visual inspector is uh, really a, a good tool to use uh, to manipulate lights. So I recommend that you um, try it and that you really try to get uh, efficient uh, in configuring lights by adjusting their values here on the visual inspector. So for the ambient lights, if we select that element in the scene hierarchy, then we see its properties here on the right side. And you'll see that we have access to the position, rotation, and scale for the ambient light. Uh, but it, in this case, it doesn't make sense to change those. Okay, So ambient light doesn't have a position. so makes no sense to try to change it, even though they appear here. So what we are interested in uh, are the properties that appear when we scroll a bit down here on the right side. So you'll see this right side panel uh, is actually composed of several drop downs that we can expand or contract. Uh, in this case, it only has one for the lights. Uh, in other objects, uh, they might have several of those drop-downs. Um, but so in this case, we, we are just interested in the one that says light. And here we can change for the ambient light, we can change the color. So ambient light uh, can have any color. So we can, for example, uh, set it to a blue color and notice the difference in the scene. So now everything is being lighted with the blue cl color. So um, if our light is blue, then the reflection from the, the objects will also obviously be blue. Uh, so now all the objects have kind of changed appearance. So of course, if you are trying to mimic uh, and natural light. Uh, sorry? Did anyone wanted to say something? No? So probably sorry, sorry. I turned on the microphone. <laughs> no, it's okay, Johnny. Don't worry. <laughs> Don't worry. Uh, so 
uh, obviously if we are trying to kind of emulate natural ambient light, uh, we should use uh, kind of a, a color um, closer to white. Um, so uh, the default one was kind of a light gray color. Uh, but we can change, so we, we, may, we may want to give an impression um, uh, of a, a specific time of day, for example, uh, where the, the, the ambient light, the color of the ambient light really changes. So we can do that uh, by changing its color. Um, so, of course, um, also an interesting uh, thing to note here uh, is that when we have a kind of a white light uh, for the, the ambient color, uh, for the ambient light, um, we will see the objects will reflect their own colors. And that's kind of obvious. So we have a blue box. Uh, and if, if we shine a white light on a blue box, we will see the box as blue. Uh, and something similar for the other objects. Uh, but when we change the color of the light, as I did uh, previously, uh, notice that uh, objects may reflect uh, very differently now. Uh, because if the, the, white, the, the, the light is white, then it actually contains all the color components. Uh, and so the objects will reflect back only uh, the color component of the object itself. Uh, now, if the light is blue, then blue does not have all the color components. And so some objects will not reflect back their own color because the light that is shining on them does not have that color component for them to reflect back. So the color of the lights really makes a difference in how we perceive the environment. And that's, that's important to be aware of. of. So I'll put this back to something closer to, or actually white, pure white. Uh, so we can change uh, the color. We can also change uh, the intensity of the light. Uh, this is a value that by, by default is a value of one. Uh, we can change this, we can make the light, the ambient light a bit dimmer. As you see, and of course, if we put it at zero, then we have no light. And we can go um, to values um, greater than one and have lights with uh, higher intensity. Uh, this intensity, it doesn't really have uh, kind of a, a unit. Uh, uh, so you just have to understand that the default value is one uh, and then we can change it uh, up or down, uh, but doesn't really have kind of intuitive meaning. So for the ambient light, this is, um, these are the two main uh, characteristics that we want to change. Uh, again, just to make sure, um, just to remember, uh, if we if you change the ambient light, any attribute of the light in the inspector, and you, you want that uh, reflected in your scene, then just make sure to copy the values that you, you set here uh, and paste them back in your source code. Otherwise, uh, you will lose all the changes that you made here in the inspector when you reload the scene. So this is ambient light. Um, we have also directional light. So um, the second default light that A-frame will inject if we don't add any light whatsoever. Uh, so let's see uh, a scene that only has one directional light without ambient light. So I'll show you the source code first. So it's the same set of objects. And then we have a light here at the bottom. Uh, and you see that it's uh, the type of the lights is directional. So the type attribute, I forgot to mention this, uh, the type attribute for the A light element is what defines for A frame what, what type of light it should create. And in, in these examples, um, I'm just adding IDs to the lights. 
again, just to make, make it easier to see the lights, uh, the elements in the visual inspector, in the scene hierarchy. So let's see the resulting environment. So again, uh, notice, uh, notice the difference. Uh, if you remember uh, the previous example with only the ambient light, where it was really hard to understand the 3D uh, of the objects because all faces had the same kind of uh, uh, color, no difference in, in intensity uh, of, of each face. Now notice here with this directional light that it really doesn't happen. So we see that some faces uh, uh, of the objects are um, uh, lighter uh, than other faces. For example, you see even in the cylinder, as I move around to the back, you'll see that the back of these objects is actually dark. So light is shining only from one direction. And this is, this is very important in the scene. This is what makes it really look uh, natural. Because even though we usually have some kind of natural light uh, in our real environments, we also have directional lighting and, and we see shadows and we are used to interpreting those shadows. So we really need this kind of effects. These are not uh, quite exactly shadows, uh, but it's a similar effect. So light comes from one direction and so the other side of the object is darker. So let's see the visual inspector. And here we have our directional light. And this is where things uh, with lights, they start to, to get a bit, a bit weird. And that's why I'm taking some time to explain this in detail so that you are able to easily control the lighting in your own uh, scenes. So if we select the directional lights and then we zoom in the scene so we'll get a better sense of where things are, you see that um, this is the default position for the directional light. And you will see that directional light, um, by, the de by its definition, uh, it doesn't really have a position in 3D space. So it, it's just light that comes from one direction uh, but it doesn't have a, a specific position. It covers the whole scene from that direction equally. However, the way uh, we have to configure uh, a directional light in A-frame is by assigning it uh, a position in space. So even though the light itself, uh, the way it is computed um, to light the, the scene, uh, it doesn't have a position, uh, it's easier for us uh, if we assign it a position to control um, the direction it shines on. So if we select the directional light, you will see that it is represented by this square here. And it also has, uh, from the center, there's a line that connects to the origin, to the zero, zero, zero of our scene, which is this point here. It's the middle of this grid. Um, and so this basically means that this directional light is shining on this direction. Uh, but it, it's of course not shining only on the zero, zero, zero. So if we go to other place in our scene, there will be a light that will come from this direction also. Uh, so how do we change the direction of the light? We can just move it. Uh, so we can, if we want, uh, a directional light that shines, for example, from the other side of the scene, then we can just move this object, can just move its position. Notice how, it, how it's rotating, but it's always pointing to zero, zero, zero. So as we move this object, we are actually changing the direction of this plane because it is always pointing to zero, zero, zero. So now we have a light that is shining on the other side of the scene. So let's, let's see. This is the default position of the user on the scene. And now everything seems black from this perspective. If we move around the scene, now we see the object. So the light is shining from the opposite position it was uh, originally. So the main control for a directional light is actually 
its direction that we control <clears throat> uh, indirectly by changing its position. Okay, it's kind of kind of weird, uh, but when you launch a Visual Inspector, this is really intuitive because you see things happening. You see the light changing as you move as you move it around. So <clears throat> it's easy and it's rather easy to change uh, the direction. Uh, if you understand how to navigate uh, the the A-frame, uh, the, the the visual inspector, it's really easy to move it around and and set the exact direction that you want. Uh, so this is the main thing for the directional light, and of course we can also change the color of the light, and we can also change the the intensity of the light. Uh, by the way, I, I didn't mention this, but uh, you can see here in these chapters that I have created uh, short videos uh, that explain how to how to do this kind of manipulation of the lights with the visual inspector. So if you don't catch some detail right now in my explanation, you can get back uh, to this chapter and see the, the video for that particular type of light. So another kind of light that we have in A-frame, it's called the hemisphere light. And now these lights, uh, this one and the next, they're really kind of specialized lights. Uh, so they, they really allow you to have kind of, kind of fine tune the way uh, your scene will look to your users. So uh, we have uh, what's called a hemisphere light, and I'll, I'll, I'll show you um, in a minute. But basically, you can think of it as kind of a, uh, a directional light that actually has two directions. So it shines light from two directions in, instead of just one. So one direction is from above and the other direction is from below. So a directional light just shines from above. You can think like, like, like that, it shines from above. Uh, and hemisphere light allows us to shine a light from below at the same time with different colors and intensities. Um, so let's see um, the, the example. So the, the source code, I won't open the source code, but the part that matters is just this. So I, uh, it, there is only one light in the scene, only one hemisphere light. And uh, so we set the type to a hemisphere, uh, and let's see how it looks. So this is the, the result. And you see, um, so you can see here, at least with the, this particular setting of this hemisphere light, uh, that objects are not uh, very well lighted, so it's harder to see um, darker faces in some in some objects at least from this perspective it's not as obvious as it, as it was in in the previous example so let's see uh, let's open the inspector and, and try to control this light so we have a hemisphere light and the way it is rep represented in a frame uh, as you can see um, it's a bit different from the directional light, uh, so you, you kind of see a square, but then um, the vertices of the, uh, of the square are joined at the top and at the bottom. And this is to represent the, the two lights that uh, are actually um, in a hemisphere light. So we can, just like um, the directional light, we can change its position in space. And again, we are basically controlling the direction uh, uh, through the position. So it's always pointing uh, at the zero, zero, zero. So the main difference from the directional light is that we have two lights. So one that shines from above and one from below. And we can change that with the color and the ground color. So for example, let's uh, 
change the ground color to kind of blue. And so you see uh, the ground color is actually a, a light that shines from below. So you, it's easy to see this on the ceiling. So the ceiling is now blue because there's a light can end up coming through uh, from the ground uh, because the, the, direction of, the direction of the hemisphere light is uh, fairly um, horizontal. So this is light that comes from, you can think of it uh, like this, although it's not technically very correct, but you can think of the ground color as light that shines from this vertice upwards. And the color, let's change this to green, for example. Uh, the color is light that shines from the top vertice downwards. So you see that our ground is now um, green. And you also see that the top of, uh, for example, the, the white cylinder is also green because there's a green light shining from the top. Of course, if we change the position of the hemisphere light, we are changing its direction. And now top and bottom are not exactly top and bottom, um, but uh, you can think of it this way. So it's simpler to think like this. OK, so this allows us to, in uh, uh, with a single light, uh, to have different colors two different colors, one from above and one from uh, one from above and one from below. Uh, and again, uh, with, all, with this color, with this light, uh, you can also change the intensity uh, to make the lights um, stronger or, or weaker. The next uh, type of light is a point light. And a point light uh, kind of tries to mimic um, a light bulb. So a light bulb is something very small and that has a very uh, defined position in space. And light from a light bulb radiates um, uh, omnidirectionally. So from a single point, it radiates everywhere. Um, so we can have, we can add a point light uh, to our scene. And let's see, again, in these examples, uh, all these scenes, they have a single light, just to make it really obvious uh, how the lights work. But in a real scene, you would add several of these, no, not just one. So let's see. Um, so to, to create a point light, you just set the type to point. And then the main thing uh, for a point light is its position. So let's see the example. You can also, you can all already uh, kind of imagine where the point light is uh, because the ceiling is very bright. Uh, in this point, so you can imagine that the point light is very close to this point here. Uh, and you kind of can see the effect of the, of the light on the scene. So, for example, you see that on the floor, um, the light, uh, the floor is very bright in, at, in this spot. But as we move um, further away from that point, you see that the ground becomes very, very dark. So light from a point light kind of decays with the distance. So unlike the directional light, for example, where everything in the floor would, would have the exact same appearance, uh, light would have the same intensity. Uh, with a point light, uh, light decays. So it gets weaker as you move away from the point uh, light source. So let's see this in the visual inspector. So here is our point light. And you can see that it's represented. Um, it's kind of kind of similar. Oops, 
uh, I did something weird here. Let me refresh this. Uh, it's kind of represented uh, in a similar way to, um, to the hemisphere lights, um, but it, it doesn't have those two colors. So it's the same kind of object. And so the main um, uh, attribute for the, this light is the position. So we can move it around and you see the effect on the scene. So we can put this light source kind of at the same, roughly the same distance between the ceiling and the floor and you see the, the effects. So it's like a, a light bulb that I'm moving through this environment. And so again, we can control the color of the light, um, but we can also control how it decays uh, as you move um, farther uh, away from the light source. So for example, let's, uh, let's put here a very high value on the decay. So uh, if you use a very high value, the default is one. If you use a very um, much higher value than one for the decay, it means that light will get weaker much, much faster as you get um, uh, further away from it. Uh, so in this case, it, it gets uh, so weak, uh, very quick, that it actually doesn't uh, shine a light anymore. Uh, if we set this to a value lower than one, then you see that, that it doesn't, um, so it takes um, uh, longer to decay to get weaker, and so you see that uh, the ground now is um, also lit even here in this in this um, uh, point in space, uh, which was not with the default value. I'm putting this back to one, so you'll see that this part here was dark. Uh, if we set this to 0 0.1, it's now being lit, so light. Uh, decayed um, slower as we move uh, along the distance. We can also, I'm, I'm going to let this at 0 0.1. Uh, we can also control the distance, as you see. And so in this case, the distance is uh, the maximum distance that the, the light will shine. Um, so we can kind of have a point light that is very specific um, for uh, um, one part of our environment and it doesn't affect objects that are far away from it. So it's one way of kind of uh, controlling the impact that a light has on, on, the, the, on other objects in our scene by uh, changing the distance. And of course, we can also control the intensity as we can for other lights. And the final type of light that we have is the spotlight. So also a very um, specialized uh, type of light. And uh, it actually works like a spotlight or like a flashlight, uh, if you'd like. Uh, so it's something that has a position in space, but instead of um, radiating omnidirectionally, it just radiates in a kind of a cone uh, shape. So just like a, a flashlight. Uh, so it has a position, uh, but it also needs, um, so now we have kind of a cone that's shining light, so we need to set its position, but also its orientation so that we control where the light is shining on. Uh, so we need to set the rotation also. And the type is spot uh, for spotlight. And we can control a few other parameters that I'll show you in the visual inspector because it's easier to demonstrate. Again, this environment, uh, this example only has a single spotlight, so no other lights. That's why it looks weird. So there is no ambient light. Uh, 
as and you can see here you can imagine that the environment actually has um, two spotlights not just one uh, so let's let's change the properties of those lights so we see one spotlight here and another one here let's uh, first change this one this white light uh, so we can oops Sorry, sometimes it's hard to control this, uh, the inspector. So you see that the spotlight has a position, so we can change the position in space. And in this case, um, you can see that the spotlight is shining uh, from the top to the bottom. Uh, that's because the rotation along the X axis is minus 90 degrees. I'm going to put this at zero and now you can see so this is the default orientation of the spotlight it's kind of uh, as if you were holding a flashlight uh, horizontally uh, uh, and away from you okay so this is the default orientation if you, we want to change um, the way it's pointing then we change the rotation for example uh, if we want to point it downwards, then uh, we can just increase the rotation on the x-axis. And of course, if we get to uh, minus 90, 90, it will shine um, vertically as it was uh, originally. So I'm going to write here minus 90. Uh, but of course, you can also rotate, uh, for example, on the Z axis, and let's put this for example at uh, 45. Uh, wait, uh, let me just show you uh, some of the other uh, properties for the spotlight. Uh, I'm going to put this back as it was to make it easier to see, and I'm going to move it. Okay, I'm going to move it a bit. Okay, this is this is okay. So it's now easier. It will be easier to to see the effect. So uh, for a spotlight, one of the things that we can control is how wide the spotlight is. So we have an angle here, and so we can increase this angle and make the spotlight larger. So if we set a very small angle, so it's kind of a very, very narrow um, spotlight. And we could actually make it very, very narrow and it would kind of uh, act like a laser beam. Uh, so if you really wanted to shine like a, a laser pointer on, on a wall, then you would set a very, very small angle. Uh, we can also set the decay. I'm going to put this back to a slightly larger angle. So uh, actually the decay, no, this is not the one that I wanted to change, sorry. Not the decay. We can also change what's called the penumbra. Uh, so the penumbra is kind of like a decay, uh, but from the, um, from the center of uh, the, the, the the cone to its periphery it's it kind of controls how light decays from the center to uh, the periphery of uh, the cone and it's easy to see when you manipulate it here in the inspector so for example as i increase the penumbra you can see up to one you can see that uh, light in the center is bright and it gets uh, darker to the periphery, uh, but if I lower this value and if I set it to zero, there will be no difference. So lights will not decay uh, to the periphery. Um, so a natural looking uh, kind of spotlight would be something closer to this, uh, but you may also create some kind of uh, effects where uh, there is no no penumbra effects. So in some situations, you, it might make sense. 
Um, so for the spotlights, for the main, the, the controls, the angle and penumbra are the, the most important ones. I'm just going to show you the, this second spotlight uh, because it's um, controlled in a slightly different way. So in this, I'm going to show you the source code first uh, for the second light. So you see that on the first one, um, I could try to control where the light was shining by rotating it. And I had some trouble trying to do that, uh, even with the visual inspector. Uh, we can uh, use an alternative way of directing uh, the spotlight uh, by setting a target. So instead of us having to rotate the spotlight uh, manually, we can just set the position and then say, I want this spotlight to be targeting uh, this object in my scene. And this is what I'm doing here. So I'm saying that I want this spotlight targeting the object that has an ID of moon, which is, as you can uh, guess, uh, it's the sphere that represents the moon. So here you will see that you will see that this second spotlight that has the moon as a target, it will, as I move it around the scene, as I move the position, its rotation, uh, its orientation will, will change. Even though we don't see the rotation here changing, uh, you see that it's always shining on the moon. So unlike the other one, which if I moved, you can see the difference. So this is very useful um, for this particular type of uh, situation where we want a spotlight on a specific object. So it makes it a lot easier uh, to control um, the orientation of the spotlight. Uh, and you can see in this case, I, I also changed the color of the light, but these are kind of um, properties that you can change for any kind of light. So this is it for the spotlight. Um, now we have the last thing to know about uh, lights is that um, we can also uh, calculate shadows that are cast by the lights. Uh, so we can make um, an object uh, cast a, light, a shadow when it is hit by uh, a light. And let me uh, make it really obvious uh, here what I mean. So in the previous example, you could see, for example, that if I move the spotlight right on top of the uh, Earth uh, object, uh, you see something weird. Uh, you see that light, the light shines through the object and it is uh, illuminating the ground also. So in, uh, in the real uh, environment, this would not happen. So this object would, would block the light from hitting on the ground. Um, but by default, this will not happen because uh, making these calculations is expensive. So we have to explicitly turn on shadows uh, for A-frame to do this. So to do that, to use shadows, uh, so again, this is the, the warning. Uh, be careful with your shadows. So uh, try uh, avoid uh, turning shadows on for all the objects and for all the lights because it will make it really expensive uh, to render your environment. So you need to be very selective. Um, also, uh, only some of the lights can cast shadows. Uh, so for example, an ambient light does not cast a shadow. So it cannot, you, you, you can't uh, add shadows that result from um, an ambient light. So actually only point spots and directional lights um, can cast shadows on objects. Um, so you should only activate shadows for this uh, type of lights. So we need to do um, 
in order to add shadows, we actually need to uh, turn on the light, uh, turn on the shadows on the lights, on specific lights, and then turn on the shadows on specific objects also. So let's see how, how we do this. Um, to, um, on, on, on the objects, uh, for us to tell which objects will uh, cast shadows on other objects, and for us to tell which objects will receive shadows, uh, we use the shadow component or the shadow attribute. So you can see here, for example, on the, on the plane that represents the ground. Uh, so on the ground, we wanted to, we wanted to receive shadows. Uh, so we can just set shadow and then use this uh, property colon value uh, syntax to say the ground should receive shadows. Notice here that uh, the ground, uh, it doesn't make sense for the ground to cast shadows on other objects uh, because we know uh, in our environment there won't be any objects um, on the other side of the ground that could casts that could receive a shadow from the ground itself. So we don't need to activate um, uh, casting shadows for the ground objects. And this will make it uh, a bit less expensive to render the scene. So we only activate receiving shadows on the, on the ground. Uh, in the cylinder, for example, we may want the cylinder to receive a shadow uh, from uh, other objects, but also to cast a shadow because the cylinder is on top of the of the of the ground, so it should cast a shadow on the ground. So for the cylinder, we may need for some objects we may need to activate both casting of shadows and receiving shadows. So we do this cast um, colon true and receive colon true, and then. We still need, so this will activate shadows on the objects. We need to activate the shadow also on the light. So if we have, for example, a directional light that we want uh, uh, to cast shadows, uh, then we have to use this kind of syntax. So we'll use the light attributes and then say cast shadow colon true. Okay, so this is, um, I usually just go back to one example that I have and I just copy paste because as you can see that the name of the attributes and the properties, uh, they are very similar, uh, but they are slightly different. So it's very easy to make a mistake. So I usually don't try to write this by heart. I just copy and paste from a working example. And I, uh, I recommend that you do that also. Uh, otherwise it's easy to make mistakes and uh, set, for example, a cast true on the light, but it should be cast shadow true on the light. So it's easy uh, to make mistakes. Um, so let's see, I'll show you in a minute how, how it works. So this is what we need to do in our code. Uh, but there's one final step uh, that we need to do, um, which is to actually uh, define what is called the shadow camera. Again, because uh, shadows are very expensive to calculate on the scene, uh, A-Frame tries to optimize and it will only calculate shadows uh, on what it calls the shadow camera. Only on, on objects that are seen by this uh, shadow camera will the shadows appear. Objects that are outside of this shadow camera will not um, calculate shadows and so this will make the scene run a bit faster. Now to, to set this shadow camera uh, we really need to use the visual inspector. Okay, So you could try to do it manually but it's really really difficult. So uh, what I do is I set these properties first on the objects and on the lights. Then I load the scene, I open the visual inspector, uh, I adjust the shadow camera and I will show you in a minute how to do it. And then I just copy from the inspector 
I just copy the attributes back to the light. So the shadow camera is defined on the light. As you can see here, this would be the final um, configuration of the lights uh, element. So in addition to the cast shadow, we need to set the properties for the shadow camera. But these values we get from the visual inspector. So I'm going to show you how to do this. So let's open the example. Uh, so let's open one of the previous examples. I think I forgot to add here an example. Uh, let me see if I forgot to add there on the chapter or if I forgot to add here. No, it's here. So I think I forgot to add it on the chapter, but I, I will do that uh, right away. Uh, so let me go to the uh, chapter. Sorry, just give me a minute so that I, I, I can, I don't forget to do this. And I'll, I'll just add the, the example. So it should be example. Okay, so now it's here. So I'll open this example. And this is the, the final um, with the lights already configured. And uh, before I open the inspector, just to um, point out where the shadows are. So here you see that the ground, which now it's, uh, it's whiter than in previous examples, uh, so that you can easily see the shadows. So now the ground is receiving shadows uh, from the moon and from the earth. You see here the shadows. And you can also see that the ground is receiving a shadow from the cylinder. And you can also see that the cylinder is also receiving a shadow from the, the, the box. Okay, so these are the objects that, that have shadows. The other ones they don't have. Okay, so you see that this object here is not casting a shadow on the ground. So I didn't activate the shadows for that object. So let's see um, the visual inspector. So we have shadows on our directional lights. And let's see, um, let's adjust the shadow camera. Let's see what this shadow camera does. So the first thing is that we need to um, we need to show in the visual inspector, we need to show the shadow camera. Otherwise we can't see anything here. So we just see the representation of the directional light. So the first thing is to scroll down on the light um, panel and just check this box here. And by the way, uh, I'm not sure if this uh, also happens in your computers, uh, but in mine, um, you see that these properties, uh, the, the full name is not being shown. So you really have to do this um, uh, slower. So you need to uh, put the, the mouse um, cursor over the property and wait a few seconds and it will uh, tell you the complete name of the property. This is important because otherwise they all, they all seem the same thing and we need to adjust different uh, properties. Uh, but for this one, the shadow camera, it's the only checkbox, so it's easy to know. So let's turn it on, the shadow camera, and now we see a weird looking object here. And let's see what's, what it is doing. So let me first uh, show you, let me first try to move the directional lights. 
So you see, I'm moving the directional lights. It's being represented by this object here, which is not very easy to see. Uh, but I'm moving the directional lights. So I'm moving, we are moving the, the directional, the direction of the directional light. And you may just have noticed that now there are some weird thing with the shadows. So when our uh, directional light is in this position, um, some shadows seem to be uh, cut off. Uh, that's because we now need to adjust the shadow camera because I changed the position of the, the light. I had to change to adjust also the position of the shadow camera. The shadow camera is this thing that appears here. And what we can control is uh, kind of uh, how wide the shadow camera is. So it kind of, kind of will uh, clip shadows that are outside of this shadow camera. So we need to adjust um, all four sides of the camera, the bottom, the top, the right, and the left. Let's, let's do this. Um, so I'll go one by one. Let's adjust the bottom. So it's this parameter here. And you can see as you move, and you can just, uh, I'm just clicking and dragging the value. And you can see the bottom of this shadow camera moving. So we need to adjust this so that the camera is as narrow as possible so that it will be the most efficient shadow camera. So let's adjust this all the way up. And we can adjust this until the shadows start to be um, cut off. So we, you see the, there in the cylinder, if we adjust this too much, then no shadow will be calculated for that part and we want it. So let's put the shadow camera bottom a bit back and try to, to get closer so it's easy to see. So this is too much. Let's get back, back, back. And we also have to see here in, in, in the Earth object, it's also a bit cut off. So now it's OK. We don't need to move it uh, further back because there are no more shadows. So it can be, uh, this, is, this will be a very, very tight camera, the most efficient one. So uh, let's see the other property now. So this is the bottom. This doesn't, uh, we don't need to worry about this. Now the left. Again, let's move it closer. And I'll overshoot just to demonstrate. And I'll try to rotate so that we can see what's happening. So the left part of the camera, if it's too much, it will clip the shadow. So let's move it a bit more, a bit more. So here it seems OK. For the left, then now for the right. So let's move to the other side. And so for the right side, as you see, it was clipping um, the shadow of the Earth and, and the shadow of the Moon. So we need to move it a lot to the right side until we see the shadow of the moon, which is the, the, right, the, the rightmost shadow in our scene. Uh, so this is, this is OK. And now the top, it's the only um, side that's missing. So the top is also clipping uh, part of the shadow of the, the Earth. I'll try to rotate to, to make it easier to see. And so let's adjust the top. OK, so I think this is enough because the shadow of the Earth is the one that extends further. So it's all it's, it's complete. And so this is it. So we just adjusted the top. Uh, it, it looks OK. So we can go again, can go back to our scene and see if everything looks OK. It seems OK. And so now we can 
And you see here that I left the show, show shadow camera on, so we see, we see the, the shadow camera here also in the preview. So let's go back and disable the show shadow camera. This is only needed for this adjustment. And now we need to copy these values for the shadow camera back into our uh, original code. And to do that, I think the easiest way, because there are many values, um, and it's hard to see which values you need to copy here because they are, at least to me, they are clipped. So I will just hit this button here, copy to clipboard, but on this light tab, copy, and now we can go back to our source code, which is uh, this here. And of course, I already have things here, but I'll just show you how I usually do. So I usually um, just add a few empty lines just below the, the lights, and I just paste the values. And you see, uh, in this case, uh, so it's not very cluttered. It's really, in this case, just a matter of copying the whole contents of the light attribute. And you see the cast shadow needs to be true, and then the settings for the shadow camera. And just replace. And then we can delete this. And now if we reload our scene, the shadows should be, um, uh, should be correct. Um, if we also change uh, the position of the directional light, because I changed it from my, from my original example. So I'm going back here to the directional light and see its position. So it's now, uh, I'm actually going to try to copy this also and do the same thing. I'll just paste it here and then just copy the position. The other uh, attributes I don't need to change. So I'll just change here the position and then delete this. And now if we reload our example, it should be okay with the directional light in a new position and all the shadows should be uh, showing fine. There's a, a weird effect here, but that's just because of the, um, the orientation of the directional light. So the box is really not shining a, a, a shadow, not, not ca casting a shadow on the complete uh, cylinder. There's a small part that does not have um, shadow. Um, and this is it. So um, this is it for light. So we saw all the types of lights. Uh, we saw how to control and how to activate shadows. Um, so that, that there's really not much more to talk about, um, uh, about lights and, and shadows.